Good morning. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Hanhart Pioneer Twin Control. This watch is available from hanhart.com for €2,281. So firstly let's look at the box that the Pioneer 1 Twin Control comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the Pioneer Twin Control comes in this matte black outer cardboard box and as you can see either end of the box is branded with the Hanhart H brand logo. On the underside of the box it has pictures which include Hanhart's brand history. So one pulls the tab and opens the lid to the watch box and as you can see inside is fully decorated with more pictures of the brand's history. Now one gets this card included with the watch and on the reverse it is filled in with the reference number of the piece, the Pioneer Twin Controls reference is 721 and also the serial number of the watch and lastly it's signed by the watchmaker which actually built your watch and I think this is a nice personal touch that one doesn't usually see at this price point and in fact one doesn't see this at higher price points of higher tier pieces. It's really nice to get a personally signed card from the watchmaker that actually built your watch and I think Han Hart deserves full credit for that attention to detail. One also gets this Han Hart leaflet which details the brand's history. Uh, the brand was founded in 1882 by uh, Johann A. Han Hart and he founded the brand on the Swiss side of the River Rhine and then in 1902 he relocated uh, the factory from the Swiss side of the River Rhine to the German side of the River Rhine. So Hanhart has real pedigree as a Swiss German brand and this piece, the Pioneer Twin Control, is indeed made in Germany in Gutenberg in the German Black Forest. One also gets this booklet which details the entire price range for every watch and every watch strap and bracelet that Hanhart currently produce. And again, this is something I think Hanhart deserves full credit for, an entire stock price list for every item they produce. This isn't something one usually gets um, with mid-tier or high-tier pieces. One simply doesn't get a price list. One has to go online to look up the prices of bracelets, straps and the watches themselves. So, very useful read if you want to look up the price of a piece. One also gets this very comprehensive Hanhart booklet and it's beautifully made. It's a very interesting read. Uh, it details the history of the brand. There are lots of colour pictures in the book. And it also details their museum, which you are welcome to visit in Gutenberg in the Black Forest. And also the history of the Pioneer Twin Control that we're going to look at in this review. Uh, all the different models of Hanhart's watches that they make, the chronographs such as the Pioneer one, and also, as you can see, the other models such as the Race Master and the Primus, for example. So it's really a catalogue which details all of the other watches they make, including the bracelets, their stopwatches, and it goes into detail about the brand's history as a stopwatch maker. So very useful read, very nice booklet, and it's just nice to get that included with the watch. It's something that brands don't usually do. Lastly, one also gets uh, this gift bag and inside the gift bag you can see that it has a pot of red Chanel nail varnish. So I'll explain what that, uh, the purpose of that is because it might seem uh, strange to you to have uh, nail varnish included with a watch. Now originally uh, Hanhart watches had a red pusher when they made the first chronograph pieces such as the Calibre 41 in 1939 and um, there's a legend behind this, so I'll just show you the pot of red nail varnish. The legend is that a German pilot's girlfriend painted the lower pusher of his chronograph watch that he used to fly with, with her red nail varnish. And the idea was that that was going to remind him of her uh, when he was away from her. And inside the gift bag is a booklet which explains the legend. Now Hanhart then adopted this because it actually serves a useful purpose uh, which I'll just explain. If you look at the watch you'll see that it has that characteristic red lower pusher. The red lower pusher operates the flyback complication to the chronograph so it resets it to the 12 o'clock position, it resets the timer to zero. So having a red pusher actually differentiates between the two pushers. The pilot wouldn't accidentally press the wrong pusher and it inadvertently resets the flyback. So the lower red pusher was then adopted by Hanhart as a design characteristic. So I really like that legend. It's a nice story behind the origin of the, um, 
red pusher so that's the reason for the red nail varnish included inside the watch box one gets a second cardboard sleeve and as you can see it has a sticker with the reference number of the twin control 721.210 so I'll show you the inner watch box and talk you through the other items one gets with it. So one removes the outer sleeve to the watch box as you can see. And inside is the watch box itself. On the lid of the watch box is branded with Hanhart 1882. One removes the lid to the cardboard watch box. And inside is the leather travel, travel watch roll. So one pulls down the flap and removes the roll. Now I'll just talk you through the other items one gets inside. One also gets an owner's instruction book and guarantee booklet. It's very comprehensive. There are good diagrams and it goes into detail how to operate the chronograph movement used. And also on the back page one has the international guarantee card which is filled in with the reference number and serial number of the piece and this would also be stamped by the Hanhart authorised dealer and filled in with the date of purchase. Now I'm pleased to report that the Hanhart Pioneer 1 Twin Control uh, is covered by a two year international guarantee which is very reassuring. So very useful read if you're unfamiliar with chronograph movements and also the terms and conditions of the two year international guarantee. Lastly one also gets a microfiber polishing cloth which is branded with Hanhart 1882. I always think it's nice to get a microfiber cloth uh, included with a watch. It's a nice finishing touch. So with regards to the leather travel roll this is the kind of high grade leather travel roll that one would expect with a high tier piece rather than a mid tier piece. One has to remember that the Pioneer Twin Control is sold at €2,281, Euro, so therefore it's a mid tier piece, it's not a high tier piece. So it's a credit to Hanhart that they haven't just used a throwaway cardboard or plastic watch box. The watch comes in this very good quality leather watch roll. Stainless steel poppers, as you can see, one undoes the two straps and then unrolls the watch roll. So genuine leather, very good quality, top grade, nice suede interior, one opens the two flaps which protect the watch in transit and as you can see there are two further leather straps which have metal poppers, one undoes. So the watch is clamped underneath these popper straps so it doesn't slide about in transit inside the travel roll. Very nice attention to detail because the interior which is suede uh, has Hanhart 1882 pressed into the suede interior. So it really is just finished to perfection and I really like it as an alternative to a plastic or cardboard watch box that one would usually get at this price point. This is the kind of leather travel roll one would actually use to store the watch uh, or also use it when uh, travelling. So it's a useful item, it's something that one would actually keep. The stitching is absolutely flawless and it's just very aesthetically pleasing to look at. So credit to Hanhart for not cutting any corners with regards to the quality of their packaging. So with regards to the watch itself, I'll talk you through the specification. The Pioneer Twin Control has a 42mm case. It has a 50mm lug-to-lug measurement and it is 15mm thick. It has a 21mm lug width and as you can see the leather strap is calf leather and it has a stainless steel rivet which goes through on both sides. Flawless stitching to the calf leather strap and the watch itself is available on several different colour straps both with and without the stainless steel rivet. So if the stainless steel rivets aren't your personal taste you can also buy the watch on a leather strap without the rivet. With regards to the case it's 42mm and there are two dial colour options. One can have the matte black dial that one, that one is looking at here. Alternatively you can buy the watch with a white dial. Personally I like the matte black dial. It's the classic chronograph colour for the uh, Panhart chronographs and also if the if the fluted bezel isn't your personal taste they also produce the same watch but with a smooth bezel option so it's nice to have those options of straps and also the option of a smooth or fluted bezel as well as the black or alternatively white colour dial. With regards to the dial I absolutely love the symmetry of having two sub dials at nine o'clock and three o'clock rather than a third sub dial at six o'clock. 
This allows for the date complication to be at this six o'clock position. So it's a very well balanced symmetrical dial. I like the symmetry of the painted on uh, Arabic numerals, which are large and clearly legible. And it really does work very well to have two uh, sub dials, but also a date complication at six. It really does complement the cathedral hands and the symmetry of the dial is clearly legible in all light conditions. Matte black dial, but it's interesting contrast with the subdials because they have a sunburst finish to the subdials, and I like the fact that the subdials are slightly recessed into the dial. So it adds interest to the dial. Index chapter ring with Arabic numerals, so very functional. It just is a very well thought out and clearly legible dial. I also like the fact that it's not over branded with text or specification. It simply says Hanhart 1882 at the 12 o'clock position and automatic at the 6 o'clock position. There is no additional information or it, the dial isn't cluttered with extra lines of text. It's often the case with chronographs that they have four or five lines of text at the 6 o'clock position. And that really doesn't work because it means the dial is too busy and cluttered. I actually like the uh, the cleanliness of the dial, the fact that it has an unframed date complication at 6 and simply says automatic. That's enough information. Domed sapphire crystal, nice slight dome to it, which complements the curved profile of the fluted stainless steel bezel, which is finished to perfection. One thing I really like about the sapphire crystal is it has AR coating. As one can see, when you tilt the watch at an oblique angle, there's a slight blue tint to the sapphire crystal because of the blue anti-reflective coating. The anti-reflective coating does work very well because it is a very highly glossy sapphire crystal and uh, it does improve the legibility of the matte black dial. The contrast of the sunburst um, subdials and also the matte black dial works very well because the subdials contrast and therefore are clearly legible. Now, with regards to the fluted bezel, this is something I want to draw your attention to because it is an iconic aspect of Hanhart chronographs. Hanhart watches are most famous for their chronographs, and this Pioneer Twin Control is inspired by Hanhart's first chronograph, which was the Caliber 41, and that was produced in 1939. Now, the Caliber 41 is an iconic, highly collectible, purist Hanhart collector's piece. And I really like that Hanhart have included the iconic elements of that Caliber 41 in this Pioneer Twin Control. It has the fluted bezel with the red mark on the rotating bezel, as you can see. It's a bi-directional friction bezel, as was the original uh, first Hanhart chronograph in 1939, the Caliber uh, 41. And as I've discussed, it has the iconic red pusher. Now, look closely at the position of the pushers. This is another iconic feature of Hanhart chronograph watches. Usually it's the case with chronograph watches that the pushers for the chronograph are symmetrical. They are equidistant from the crown. But if you look closely at the positioning of the pushers on this chronograph, you'll see that they are asymmetrical rather than being symmetrical. The top crown, uh, the top pusher uh, is further up the case than, from the crown than the bottom pusher. As you can see, the lower red pusher, which resets the fly graph complication, sits closer to the crown, the winding crown for the movement. And that's a nice feature. The asymmetrical pushers were a feature of the very first Hanhart chronograph, the Caliber 41. And I think it's a credit to Hanhart that they've gone to the trouble of including the asymmetrical layouts of those pushers. It's very true to the original first chronograph. So that's something to note. The red lower pusher is an iconic Hanhart feature. The asymmetrical spacing and also the red marker on the fluted bezel. These are all key Hanhart elements. So this watch really does have the pure pedigree, the lineage, and the heritage uh, right back to that 1939 Hanhart Caliber 41. The solid stainless steel crown is coin edge finish and the coin edge finishing is done to perfection. Coin edge finishing beautifully complements the finishing to the uh, curved profile fluted bezel, very nicely executed. As you can see it has the Hanhart H, nicely chromed domed cap to the stainless steel crown. The benefit of using a ETA7750 based movement is it has hand winding and hacking, so one can manually wind the automatic movement to top up the 42 hour power reserve. I really like the use of the signed H brand logo on the crown, it just finishes it to perfection. 
The pushers really are a pleasure to use. The top pusher activates the chronograph as one would expect and as you can see the second hand which is red tipped begins to sweep around the dial. The red second hand uh, really does, the red tip to the second hand really does contrast beautifully with the matte black dial and also complements the cathedral hands which give the watch a vintage aesthetic. Nice positive solid clicking action when one operates the stop start uh, pusher at the top. When one presses the lower red uh, asymmetrical pusher it operates the flyback complication as you can see the second hand flies back to the 12 o'clock position hence the name flyback chronograph. So the chronograph does work very well and the resetting is very accurate. The red tip to the second hand perfectly resets when one presses the flyback uh, pusher as you can see it always resets to bang on the 12 o'clock index. So very well executed accurate chronograph as one would expect. So with regards to the rest of the specification, 100 meters water resistance, it has a push-pull crown and it has a screw-down case back. Now the quality of the finishing on the screw-down case back is some of the best I've seen. The, the laser engraving to the case back is done to perfection. I really like the large H for Hanhart and also I like the use of the three points on the screw-down case back. Uh, it really does make a refreshing change for the more uh, conventional option of a slotted case back with milled slots in the case back. So the three points give good symmetry because as you can see uh, that also carries through to the engraving uh, those three points. Nice concentric brushing uh, to the centre section as you can see it refracts the light beautifully. I like the reflection of that concentric brush satin finish to the case back. The underside of the case back is mirror polished to a flawless finish and I just think it's an absolute pleasure to look at and Han Hart deserve full credit for the quality of the case polishing and also the case back finishing. Fluted solid stainless steel bezel finished to perfection, nice brush satin finish to the tops of the case and also the flanks. I like the use of the brush satin finish on the flanks of the case, they add interest. It also gives the watch a tall watch aesthetic, uh, bearing in mind that this watch is inspired by the original 1939 chronograph which had a similar brush satin finish to the case. The brush satin finish really is Rolex quality and bearing in mind that this is a mid-tier piece costing €2,281. I think it's a credit to Hanhart because this is the kind of case finishing one would expect to see on a high tier piece costing four to five thousand euro. Just below the fluted bezel if you look closely you can see there is a mirror polish section which continues around uh, the circumference underneath the fluted bezel. Very nice attention to detail and that mirror polish section underneath the bezel contrasts beautifully with the brush satin finish of the flanks of the case. I really like the quality of the calf leather strap and also the concentric uh, machining to the rivet on both sides. It's got a nice domed profile to the rivet which catches the light. The stitching is absolutely flawless on the top side and also the underside of the calf leather strap. Good thick stiff strap which is going to be durable and last a good length of time. Make no mistake this isn't the kind of cheap quality leather strap that's going to split or crack with regular daily usage. I'm absolutely confident that this leather strap is going to last for a long, uh, long length of time. So good quality strap on a very well executed case. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how the watch fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now I'm pleased to report that this watch does indeed fit my 8 inch wrist as you can see there's plenty of length on the strap. For reference this is uh, the long length of strap, they come in three strap lengths, small, medium and long. This is the long length and as you can see it does indeed fit my 8 inch wrist. Now on the wrist it's an incredibly comfortable piece due to the flat profile of the stainless steel case back. Yes it is a reasonably tall piece at 15 millimeters thick and that is the trade-off one gets with using an automatic chronograph movement such as the ETA 7750. But however uh, due to the 42 millimeter case it is very well proportioned on the 21 millimeter leather strap. So 15 millimeters, but it will easily fit underneath the shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. So this is the ideal daily wear piece. Uh, if you're going to wear the watch every day for long periods of time, very comfortable and it feels deceptively lightweight despite its heft. 
Yes, it is quite a large piece at 42 millimeters and with a 50 millimeter lug to lug measurement, but due to the curved profile of the case, you can see that it wraps around the wrist very well. And I feel that when the thick leather strap breaks in, it would indeed become very comfortable to wear uh, for long periods of time, as I've discussed. Now, with regards to the buckle, very well executed, buckle and tang, brushed satin finish to the solid stainless steel buckle. As you can see, it's engraved with the H for the Hanhart brand logo. Two keepers on the strap, one fixed and one slides, as one would expect. And really, I have to give due credit to Hanhart for not cutting any corners with regards to the leather strap and the buckle and tang. Uh, it really does work very well on a chronograph piece. So I want to talk about the movement because that is one of the major positives of this watch. So the movement used in this watch is an automatic chronograph. It's the Caliber HAN3809. So the HAN3809 is based on a Swiss ETA 7750. Now the ETA 7750 is a reliable well proven automatic chronograph movement. It's been used for a long time and it's been used in numerous chronographs. Good solid reliable movement. Now in addition to that ETA 7750 Hanhart have also added a Lejeune Perret module and I just want to give due credit to Hanhart for that. Le Jeu Pere makes some of the best quality Swiss movements and also Swiss made modules for chronograph movements. So it is the perfect um, addition to the Swiss ETA 7750, which in itself is a good quality Swiss chronograph movement. The ETA 7750 is wholly compatible with a Le Jeu Pere module. So why do they do that? Well, by adding a Le Jeu Pere module to the 7750, it enables Hanhart to have the date complication at 6 o'clock, as you can see. The other positive is that it allows for the asymmetrical formation of the pushers. Without Le, the Le Jeu Perret module, the pushers would have to be symmetrical, uh, equidistant from the crown, and therefore it wouldn't retain the original look of that first um, Hanhart Calibre 41 chronograph from 1939 with the asymmetrical pushers. So it works very well. The Le Jeu Perret module is accurate, it's reliable, it's very well, well built. So I like it. I like the fact that this uh, piece uses a Swiss movement, the ETA 7750, with a Swiss module, the Le Jeu Perret. So very good quality and I'm pleased to report that it has a 42 hour power reserve and this one is running at an accuracy of plus two seconds per day, which really is outstanding for the price point. The movement has uh, 28,800 vibrations per hour and it runs at the industry standard frequency of 4 Hz. 28 joules, hand winding and hacking and overall I just think it's a credible choice. So this is a good quality German made chronograph with a top quality uh, Swiss made uh, chronograph movement with a Swiss made module. So let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs on the dial and hands when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So I'm going to charge it up using my 100 LED UV torch to the absolute peak performance. Now I'm expecting this watch to have outstanding quality loom because looking at the rest of the specification it's clear that Hanhart haven't cut any corners with regards to the quality. And as you can see it has not disappointed. The large painted on Arabic numerals are fully loomed as you can see and the large cathedral hands are glowing very brightly and they're continuing to glow for a good length of time. So top quality loom. I love the green tone of it on the cathedral hands. It reminds me of uh, C3 Superluminova or alternatively Tritium loom. Uh, so very good choice. A excellent quality and very bright as you can see on the cathedral hands it's glowing incredibly brightly. So top quality loom and I think a credit to Hanhart they haven't cut any corners with regards to the Superluminova. So lastly I'll surmise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel the watch should meet two criteria. The watch should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So the price point of this Pioneer Twin Control is €2,281. Yes, I consider it to be excellent quality, and yes, I also consider it to be excellent value at the respective price. I really think that this watch cannot be beaten. If you're looking for a chronograph, and for example, if you're considering a Amiga Speedmaster, or alternatively, you're considering a Tudor Black Bay chronograph, 
I think this is a better buy because it's significantly less expensive. This watch would be the kind of quality one would expect and the kind of specification one would expect between four and five thousand euro, but it doesn't cost four to five thousand euro like a Speedmaster or Tudor Black Bay chronograph. This watch costs two thousand two hundred and eighty one euro. So the, the value is there, it is an incredible value proposition. And even though it is at that value price point in the mid tier, as you can see, they haven't cut any corners with regards to the build quality, the quality control, and also the specification. It's all there. It has a sapphire crystal with AR coating, super luminova on the dial and hands. It's German made, and it also has a quality Swiss ETA 7750 with a Lejeune Perret Swiss module. So there really are no negatives to the watch and it's very unusual for me to look at a watch and not be able to find any criticisms, anything that I think needs to be improved upon, changes that need to be made. This watch is absolutely flawless. It is the perfect chronograph watch. If you're looking for a mid-tier chronograph, German made with a Swiss movement, this is it. It is a perfect daily wear piece. So I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. I highly recommend this watch to you for your consideration. So I hope you've liked my review of the Hanhart Pioneer Twin Control. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.